What's going on guys, it's Ness bringing you guys a new video. I'm going to bring you guys a video talking about the vampire skills and the reworks we heard about a few days ago from Outcast, Netflix, people like that. Links to them will be down below as well as Outcast website because I'm going to have images of the skills on screen for you guys throughout the video. So all credit goes to Outcast of course and link to his website will be down below. Now getting right into it, I would have made the video a couple days ago but I was a little bit busy. I still wanted to make it though, of course, because I wanted to give a PvPer's perspective of this. I don't believe any PvP channel has made a video on this. I haven't paid a ton of attention recently, but I'm pretty sure it's only been videos really revealing this information and just briefly talking about it. So I want to briefly talk about it as well, but just give it the perspective of a PvPer and how I think these are going to work in PvP. So first and foremost, I'm really happy that they didn't copy and paste Werewolf. I was really worried about that. I thought they were just going to make it exactly like Werewolf and the passives were going to be useless, they were going to make them all terrible, and you were going to have to transform into the ulti to use them, and you were going to lose the skills, you were going to have to be in the vampire transformation to use the skills, so we are going to lose stuff like misform, stuff like that. And that really would have sucked to me, honestly, because Mag doesn't already have a ton of snare removal, so you, you're already forced into using either Race Against Time or Misform, really. And if we lost Misform, then we we're going to have to pretty much only buy Sigic to get Race Against Time, which would really suck. But getting into this, obviously it's not like that whatsoever from everything that I've seen and everything that a lot of people have seen and read is you can be outside of the transformation, you can use all these skills. There's a lot of interesting skills, obviously I'm going to talk about them in the video, but it's really just interesting the route they went with the passives and the skills. I do think it's going to be very, very strong. So getting into talking about the ultimate first and foremost, they changed it basically into like the bone colossus essentially from necro is what i'm getting at so you're going to get health magic and stamina certain percent for obviously the duration that's a very interesting take on it i'm just hoping it's not too much because people already do have a good bit of health in cyrodiil and magic and stamina so i'm hoping this isn't a massive buff maybe like 10 percent 15 percent i feel like is pushing it but Obviously, it's one of those things if you need to make it worthwhile, but not too crazy. Now, while you're in the form, you're going to heal for a percentage of the damage you deal, is what I'm understanding. And this certain morph that I have up on screen is the Bats morph. I do think this morph is going to be the only morph that people really use, because obviously, nostalgia reasons, and I do think this serves a lot more purpose than the other morph. The other morph gives you Vampire Stage 5, which doesn't give you any negative effects of Vampire, but... I think the bats is going to be a lot more useful for PvP and just a majority of the game. Also, obviously, if you're healing based off the damage you deal, obviously having an added damage of bats is going to really benefit you there as well. So just another reason to definitely go with the bats morph. But I'm hoping the cost of this doesn't increase by a ton. I do think they're going to increase the cost of it, sadly. It's one of those things of, again, I just hope they don't make it like Werewolf. I hope it doesn't cost like 300 ultimate because then it's going to take you forever to build this up and a lot of people just aren't going to be able to take advantage of it nearly as much as I'm sure they want to. Now, obviously, if they keep it at something, you know, more affordable, quote unquote, you know, at 200 ultimate, 225, somewhere around there, hopefully, just make it not last forever, maybe like 10. I feel like 12 seconds is pushing. I feel like 10 seconds is very good. Um... Something like that for that amount of ultimate, I feel like that's a good amount. Obviously, leave your opinions down below. These are just my opinions on how I think this would work out decently in PvP. Any longer than that, though, like a longer duration, I think it would definitely have to cost like 300 ultimate or something much higher. Now, getting into the first skill, this skill, as far as I know, is a spammable, which is very interesting because people might be able to use this on certain classes if they don't like their class spammable. Now, the certain morphs I don't really like entirely, I think they could have done something a little bit more interesting with them, but both morphs are magic damage, which is weird because this first morph, it costs health and increases the damage bonus. It does additional damage based on your missing health. That's one of those things of in PvP, like... You don't want to be dealing damage when you're very low health. When you're very low health, you're going to be wanting to heal yourself. So hopefully this is like missing, you know, a small amount of health or maybe up to like half health. But if this is like it deals more damage and you have to be at like 25% health, 10% health to get any benefit out of this, I don't think anybody's going to use that morph. As well as it costs health. So hopefully it's not too costly because obviously this is a spammable. So if you're 
spamming away your health to deal damage. It's just very weird, and I don't think a ton of people are going to use this morph. Now, the other morph, Disembowel, obviously this one is going to cost magic, so I think a lot more people are going to use this. And it says, will always critical strike if you cast while under half health. So again, this kind of goes back to the, what the other morph is going to do. If the other morph costs, you know, a ton of health, obviously people are, are going to want to use it off of that. This one costs magic, so that's a reason to use it. And likewise, like, it deals more damage based on your missing health. So it's, do you want to have, you know, less health and have it hit more? Or do you want to just always crit strike when you're under half health? And while you're under half health, isn't too, too bad because, like, 50% health, 45% health, you can still have, like, 13 14 15 k health on a lot of builds so that's still a good amount of health i would much rather go with the crit strike morph if i was going to use it but definitely something to be seen when we see more information on it and see it in the pts and stuff like that moving on to the next skill now looking at cold blood and taste for blood i do think this is going to be a very interesting ability it's going to turn a lot of people off probably but if you can fit this in your build and your play style and certain areas of the game I do think it's going to be very useful and I could already tell you certain ways I'm going to use it but looking at cold blood I do think this is going to be the preferred morph the other morph is interesting but I think this is going to be definitely the majority used morph so it increases your weapon and spell damage by a certain amount just for having it toggled on now this morph while it remains toggled on it increases that bonus but it also increases the cost up to a maximum now obviously the longer you keep it up, the more it's going to drain your health, but likewise, you're going to do more damage. So if this is actually like a beefy, you know, damage buff, a lot of people are probably going to figure out ways to use this in duels, in group play and stuff like that. It's going to be very interesting to see. It's one of those things of you could, if you're on a very good build, you're probably going to be able to use this in a 1vx, but it's to be seen which classes are going to be able to make bar space for this because it is a toggle. So, you know, if you only have it on one bar, like it's going to be weird because it depends on how fast it builds up. Like if it takes a little bit of time to build it up, you're going to need to bar swap. So you're going to have to have it on both bars. If you can just toggle it on when you go in for your burst combo and just have it on your front bar, that's going to be cool, but I don't feel like it's going to build up that quickly. So, again, it's one of those things we really need to see the values on. I'm hoping, honestly, it does give you a ton of damage, but likewise, it's probably going to be very costly to keep it up, and you're going to be chunking yourself using this ability. Now, the other morph is just when you turn it off, you heal for a portion of the health that you use to cast this. So, that's very interesting. I think that will be used as well by some people, but... I think more people are going to lean towards the damage morph for obvious reasons. Now going on to skill 3, this is the Vampire Drain rework. So I think it's one of those things that just not a lot of people are going to use once again. It drains them, same as it used to before. It deals magic damage and heals you for your missing health. Now one morph, it restores your missing magicka as well, a portion of it. So that's very interesting. Maybe we'll see people using this as a sustainability. It definitely depends on how much Magicka we're talking about. And obviously it restores the Magicka over a certain amount of time. So I don't think it's going to be very valuable to like spam this if you're missing Magicka. But this could be very interesting. It could be very powerful if it gives you a lot of your Magicka back. But we'll see. It's one of those things of are you going to have bar space for this? And is it going to be better than something like Ellie Drain? But... The other morph, Invigorating Drain, same as it used to be, just generates ultimate. Now going on to the fourth skill. This fourth skill is a CC, which is, honestly, I think this is going to be like the mag turn evil. How, like, a lot of stand builds use turn evil as their CC, because it's better than a lot of CCs out right now. It gives you weapon damage for slotting it. It CCs people through block and roll, everything like that. It costs stamina. This, I think, is going to be basically the Magicka equivalent of that. So, essentially, it's just a fear. Seduce all enemies around you, stunning them for so many seconds if they're facing your direction. Now, Hypnotize, I definitely think this is going to be the morph that everybody uses because it says affects all enemies around you. Now, obviously in PvP, it's going to be interesting to see if there really is a hard cap on that. Are we really talking all enemies? Because if I can fear like 40 people, I mean everybody's going to use this. This is going to be like the greatest ability to ever hit PvP ever. But I don't think it's going to really let you do that. It's to be seen. Hopefully it doesn't cost too much because 
obviously like fear petrify a lot of the max cc's cost like 4k magic which is very costly so i'm hoping this costs a little bit less than that and uh you know it's just very interesting hopefully it's very good when it comes out the other more stupefy it just snares the people when the effect ends i don't think a lot of people are going to use that when one morph is going to stun a lot more people i think a lot more people are just going to go with the stun route and last but not least is misform now i'm really loving what they did with misform so instead of it just costing you a chunk of magica when you use it it's going to be a toggle and cost you a certain amount of magica every second you stay in it i liked that a lot because the big thing with misform was you would use it but you wouldn't always stay in it a very long time. It would last four seconds, right? So sometimes you would just use it to literally get snares off you. You would cast it and instantly come right out of it. So that's four Magicka, just gone. And you barely even used it. You just use it to get snares off you. Or you would use it for like two, three seconds. You know, somewhere in between. And just use it to get around a corner. And again, just cost you so much Magicka for a couple seconds. It was very costly to use. And I really like what they do with this. The toggle, the magic of costing every second you stay in it, it's very good because it's one of those things of, you know, I can already tell you that people that don't know what they're doing, they're probably going to misform around forever and they're going to be like, oh, I can't die because I'm staying in misform, but they're not going to realize that, hey, you spent so much time in misform, you don't have any magic left. So I can see this being one of those things of a lot of people are going to sit in it probably, but likewise, they're probably going to run themselves out of magic very fast. So looking at these morphs, I haven't looked at the morphs for this. Uh, Blood Mist deals damage and heals you for the damage caused. So basically like the damage morph you have right now. And then Elusive Mist, same thing as it is right now. Increase your movement speed. So obviously I think much more people are going to use the movement speed one rather than the damage one. Just because you want to be quick in this. You want to use this to get in and out of fights to move around. So again, I do think they need to go another route with the damage one. Unless the damage one is going to hit very hard. Um, it deals magic damage now. I think they changed it to magic damage a little bit ago. But again, it's one of those things of even as it sits, it's very low magic damage. And it's just not that great. So I think they could go another route with this or buff the damage and make the damage, you know, pretty decent. But to be seen. Now, last but not least are the passives. The passive reworks are some are the same and some are beefed up pretty big and going to be... Uh, Either OP or very annoying in PvP. So Dark Soccer, ignore the movement speed penalty of sneak and decrease the amount of time it takes to enter sneak. I think that's going to be one of those things that it's, it's cool, it's roleplay. I think it's going to be annoying though in PvP because you're going to see people just try and stealth away from you over and over. So cool, but I can see it being annoying. Now this passive, I think this is going to be ridiculous for ganking and for a lot of builds that use misform. So when you leave sneak, invisibility, or misform, your spell damage is increased by a certain amount for so many seconds. This I think is great because you're going to see people come out of misform and instantly just go on the offensive. I really like that because that fits the playstyle of a lot of mag characters right now. Is you know. You missed out, and then when you come out of mist, you get more. You're gonna get more spell damage, so that's gonna increase your healing if you have to heal yourself back up. It's gonna increase your spell damage. You just turn around and burn people. So very good passive here. I really like what they did with this. Hopefully it stays the same, and hopefully it's a decent amount. Hopefully it's not like, you know, anything too crazy, but maybe like five percent, six percent. I wouldn't go over something like ten percent spell damage. I feel like that might be too strong. Of course, it depends on how long it lasts. Like if this only lasts like a few seconds like three, four seconds, then something like 10% would probably be right. But if we're talking about, you know, longer than that, if we're talking like five plus seconds, I would definitely say something like 10% spell damage or under probably. Obviously the infection passive. So you can just infect your friends with vampire. And last but not least is on death. Obviously on death reduces your damage taken by a percentage on your missing health obviously i think this is going to stay the same as it is right now but we'll see maybe they'll buff it or change it oh and also the unnatural movement so unnatural movement how could i forget this reduces the cost of sprint which is very interesting the second part if you continuously sprint for so many seconds you automatically become invisible uh I think this is one of those things of it's going to be very, very annoying, but I think it's also going to be very, very cool because you're going to see a lot of people that are 
probably going to 1vx with this. You're going to see them just sprint around and become invisible over and over. It's going to be annoying because essentially everybody's going to be Nightblades. So again, that's taking away some class diversity. So I don't know. I mean, it just says you automatically become invisible. It doesn't say for how long. It doesn't say how long you have to sprint for, obviously. So hopefully you have to sprint for a good amount of time. And I'm hoping this isn't permanent invisibility. Hopefully, like, it'll have a duration when it comes out. Because I can already see people, like, just sprinting around in groups together. And then all of a sudden you have, like, ten people pop out at you and you're just dead. So, again, hopefully we see some changes to this. But, yeah, that's about it for the vampire changes. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And let me know what you guys think down below with the vampire changes, of course. I want to know what you guys think. What do you guys think that these should cost last any changes that should be made of course uh once again all links to people will be down below credit to outcast for the images that have been on screen throughout the video thinking about patreon once again links to my patreon will be down below as well of course amnes animo